What's up everybody? Welcome back to Jay-Z Rail TV. This is part two of our Airbnb journal, Expectations versus Reality. And boy, there has been a serious reality check with trying to get this thing put together. Uh, initially, when I decided to do Airbnb, I thought that this was gonna take about two weeks to do everything that I needed to do. Um, again, this unit used to be a traditional rental, so I had to go in and of course clean it up after my last tenant, um, and then get it to a point where it was as perfect as it could be. Um, every issue doesn't get it, get addressed when you're doing something like this, but you want to be very meticulous and particular and just make sure that every nook and crevice looks appealing to the eye and doesn't look like a mistake or a place that you neglected. So wanting to be that thorough ended up making this take a little while longer than I thought because for everything that I updated, it was sitting next to something else and I was like, I can't have this looking good and then this is looking crazy sitting right next to it. So there was always this domino effect of once I fix that up, now this doesn't compare to that and I can't let one sit next to the other so let me just fix this and let me fix this because it's right next to that and so that process just kept going and going and going. Um, now to add fuel to that fire was the fact that again I wanted to get this done in two weeks but I'm also an entrepreneur right. and I run my own business so I had to juggle the amount of time that I dedicated to converting the traditional rental to an Airbnb and running my full-time business which at any given moment in time I'm usually communicating between anywhere from four to eight clients at a time for their specific project that I'm facilitating uh, and then on top of that you know I like to spend time with my wife I like to at least have a moment to breathe and <laughs> you know just do different things so it ended up in reality taking two months for me to get the place ready to be listed on the Airbnb website. So I thought it was gonna take two weeks, it ended up taking two months. Um, and so some of the things that we kinda addressed during that time, uh, a huge thing that we had to update inside of our unit just to give it that finished look, we have, our kitchen was very dated and anybody who knows property knows that two of the major selling points is always gonna be the kitchen and the bathroom. That's when you purchase in a home, but even for a short-term rental, it's still a good place to try to update. Everything else is typically easy to do. So for us, one Goliath that we were gonna have to slay was the kitchen. Yes, that kitchen was so outdated. We removed all of our doors, off of the cabinet doors off of the cabinets, sanded those down, sanded the entire body of the cabinets down and painted it and then reattached it all. Mm -hmm. um, now, keep in mind, again, a dated kitchen means that there's a lot of grease, grime, and other things that were on these cabinets, so we had to go through a process of, number one, prepping them to be sanded, because you Correct. can't just sand them immediately. We had to degrease our cabinets first, which was a process in itself, then sand them, then prime them, then paint them. Right. So, uh, you know, things like that, Initially, you, you would think that they would go fast, but once you get into it, even with a small kitchen, it ended up taking a lot longer than we thought. Uh, but at the end, I was very satisfied with the color that we chose, mm -hmm. and I was satisfied with the finish that we got from the paint job. It worked out really good, and it brightened up the entire kitchen. One of my best friends during the process of um, updating the kitchen was again appliance grade spray paint there's different types of spray paint you have to make sure for specific projects you purchase the high temp spray paint and so we had a range hood above our stove and it was just grimy and no matter what we did to clean it it really just didn't come clean it's like the stains were set in so deep that cleaning wasn't going to be the solution so we opted to basically spray paint it with an appliance paint the before and after it looks pretty good moving on to the one of our bathrooms had a a very dated vanity no, that wasn't even dated yeah, let's keep it let's the... keep it gangster right <laughs> let's just say what it was right? 
because the vanity was pretty, pretty nice. The actual vanity was pretty nice. It was how it was. Okay, so just being transparent. <laughs> The bathroom's vanity was a struggle bus. And the reason why is because at the time when I first moved in, uh, my dad and I, we did a we did a quick patch job on um, the vanity because it was damaged by some tenants. So we had to do a quick, a quick patch job to get our new tenants in. And just being honest, it didn't look all that great. So I had to go back in there and redo what we did the first time just a lot better so um i had to detach the vanity strip all the caulking off of it and then um kind of re-caulk it reset the vanity properly against the wall and inside the body of the cabinets that hold the vanity and um and that ended up taking longer than i expected as well because even though we did a janky job we also did a good job with applying that caulk and it was really really hard to get off just keeping it thugging. It was hard to get it off, but I eventually, um, with the use of a razor blade, some goof off and the other couple of scraping tools, I finally was able to get it done. And again, it just increased the finished look of the unit and that bathroom, particularly to where I felt a lot more comfortable having uh, people as guests inside of this unit. One thing that I needed to update just for the functionality of operating the place as an Airbnb was to update a lot of the locks. Um, of course, we just had regular physical key locks, but we wanted to change those to some smart locks or some uh, keyless entry locks. So again, because this was a gamble, we didn't want to spend all of our money on a whole bunch of smart locks. So I purchased one smart lock and I purchased a keyless entry. Now, if you don't know the difference, Keyless entry is just that. You punch in the code, it's gonna unlock your door. That's it. A smart lock is gonna communicate with your phone and if you have a smart hub that can control these smart devices, you can do things remotely like reset keyless entry codes. You can um, monitor when the codes are used. You can assign specific codes to specific people. And a lot of other functionality comes with having a smart lock versus just keyless entry. I had to learn that one the hard way because I thought that all keyless entry locks were smart locks. That's not the case. <laughs> and even after I got the smart lock, I had to learn that just because you have a smart lock doesn't mean you can control it with just your cell phone. You still need a smart hub in order to make that smart lock work. So essentially, the, our unit has two doors in the front and two doors in the back. Um, the two doors in the front, one is a security door, one is the traditional standard front door, and the same for the back. And so essentially we would have needed to have purchased four smart locks in total to cover all of those doors. Um, but because of the way that the locks attach to the housing of our security doors, it just didn't fit right and it wasn't working right, so we decided to not put any smart locks on those doors and just leave traditional deadbolt locks on those doors. Um, it ended up working in our to our benefit because we were able to kind of control the access to the building even when guests do have smart keyless entry codes that they're gonna be using. Um, and in situations where we don't have enough time to go in and actually manually switch the codes after someone leaves, we can always just secure the unit and know that you know we don't have to worry about anything in total it ended up costing us. wait wait don't tell them yet don't tell them yet because we haven't even told them everything that's included in the cost to starting up right bottom. right okay so let's take this into account um just some of the basic things that we spent money on to start and establish our Airbnb. Renovations. So for the renovations, we had materials that we had to buy. Sometimes we may have had to purchase a tool here and there if I didn't already own it. Right. Um, and then there was furnishing the place, which we already told you how we got the furniture, but we also had to purchase a lot of decor, um, pictures for the walls, and just little small ornaments that we could set around in the home to make it feel a little more homey. And complete. And complete, right. 
uh, and then there were some of the technical augmentations like the smart locks um, the internet the internet the smart hub yep the smart hub uh, the utilities we had to establish and put the utilities in our name as well so that was an additional um, startup expense but that expense is unique because it's going to be recurring right but um so those are some of the things that we had to to spend money on to start up so with that being said now can i tell them do y'all want to know all right it cost us drum roll please <laughs> that ain't no drum roll no <laughs> Okay, drum roll, please. <laughs> drum roll, please. It cost us $4,000 in startup money to get the Airbnb to the point where it was ready to be listed. Um, now, that in itself was a big expectations versus reality sort of situation because if when I first started, I thought that this process would take maybe two weeks two weeks and I thought that it would probably cost me around a grand but again the the cleaning bug got the best of me and then I just started going crazy and making sure that every little nook and cranny was as pristine as it could be and so keep in mind that four thousand dollars was also spent throughout two months which means that it wasn't one bulk amount of money that I just had to see go away immediately. It kind of was, you know, over time, but I was very meticulous and, and what's the word? I was very responsible with keeping up with all of the receipts. So I was able to sort them out, categorize them, and then tally everything up at the end. And, and only I purchasing necessarily things to get the job up and running right right we didn't we didn't splurge we did what we need to do to make the place clean functional and cover all the bases to accommodate our guests and that was it and so it ended up costing us four thousand dollars so of that four thousand that we spent the largest amount of it i would say went to the things that we just couldn't shortchange. we had to buy these things brand spanking new um such as pillow pillows pillow cases mattress covers um linens like bath towels face towels appliances uh, certain appliances that we just didn't have microwave toasters um you know kitchen kitchen appliances countertop appliances uh what else we actually had to get a um more what a dishwasher that's an appliance oh yeah so not we just ended countertop up yeah we also purchased a dishwasher and washer and dryers for the unit so those were three major appliances that also had to be factored into that four thousand dollar budget so those are some big ticket items and so you could kind of understand where uh certain things we just weren't able to be frugal about or be thrifty about we had to just go ahead and buy it brand spanking new so far well we won't get into that right now mm -mm. you have to stay tuned and find out if we've made that money back or if we are in the hole and don't forget to like our video so we know that you're enjoying the content and you want to see more with that being said it's jazzy real tv